Hello everybody, it's your Peacekeeper coming at you with the next video in our How to Play series on the German battleship line. This is the Gneisenau class of battleships. It is the Tier 7 German battleship. The Gneisenau class is also called the Scharnhorst class of battleships, owing in large part to the fact that Scharnhorst launched before Gneisenau did, so that if you search for either or, you will get both results in Google and on Wikipedia. I believe it actually leads to the same exact web page. It is pronounced Gneisenau. The G does have a hard sound, and the EI makes an I sound, so Gneisenau. This ship has a number of notable firsts in this game. It is the first Kriegsmarine battleship in the game, Kriegsmarine being the era of Hitler's Nazi Germany. It is also the first ship to actually be called a battleship, a Schlattschiff. Most of the ships prior to this were either called Panzerschiff, which is an armored ship, or Linienschiff, which would be a ship of the line or line ship. So this is the first one we actually get to call a true battleship, although the previous classes of ships, they're all battleships in terms of normal naming conventions or contemporary naming conventions. In terms of design, the Gneisenau and Scharnhorst were designed originally to augment the Deutschland-class Panzerschiffs. That would be Deutschland, Admiral Graf Spee, and Admiral Scheer. With a higher tonnage, that higher tonnage was used primarily to add protection to the ships. The original design called for triple 11-inch gun turrets that we see in Scharnhorst today. Hitler, after finding out about that, was very upset and wanted to order these ships instead with 15-inch guns, but after much discussion, relented, owing in large part to the fact that he didn't want to provoke the Royal Navy with the twin 15-inch gun mounts we see on Gneis now in-game. So, because of that, it was ordered, they were ordered and built with the triple 11-inch gun mounts that we see on Scharnhorst in the game. They did go through a number of upgrades through their history. The most notable one is at launch. They had the straight vertical bow, and as a result of that, had very poor sea keeping in a very wet foredeck area. That would be this area here. Which made working in the front end of the ship very, very wet due to rough seas in the, in the North Atlantic. They were later refitted to have the Atlantic bows that we see on them today, which drastically reduced the wet deck part of the Gneisenau and Scharnhorst. That was their most notable upgrades. In terms of notable battles, both Gneisenau and Scharnhorst spent most of their war either as commerce raiders or in dry dock. Scharnhorst spent almost her entire history as a commerce raider, Gneisenau, pretty much the same thing, except for she spent most of her time in dry dock, owing in large part to the Royal Air Force's continued bombing of her every time they found her. Scharnhorst and Gneisenau both participated in Operation Cerebus, which was the channel dash, as we call it, that moved them from the Atlantic Ocean over to Kiel and back into German ports, as opposed to being in French ports. So that's really what they're most notable for, and the whole premise behind the Channel Dash is that they were trying to put these ships in position to intercept convoys between the United Kingdom and, and Soviet Union at the time, Russia today. Gneisenau, Prince Eugen, and Scharnhorst all completed that dash for that purpose. In terms of fate, well... As I said before, Gneisenau spent most of her time in dry docks, again, owing in large part to the Royal Air Force's continued bombing of her every time they saw her. In fact, it was a aerial torpedo strike that actually put her out of commission for the longest. She did take several bomb hits that failed to penetrate her armored deck, and then later, just prior to her eventual scuttling, they did manage to land a couple that managed to penetrate through the armored bomb deck and cause significant damage to the ship and unfortunately killed a whole bunch of people. Gneisenau, during the course of her history sitting in do dry dock, was intended to actually get the 15-inch mounts that we have, 15-inch gun mounts that we have in game for her main armament. Unfortunately. 
the Royal Air Force had other plans, and the repeated bombing and the eventual uh, destruction of the front end of the ship is what sealed the deal on whether or not she was going to get those 15-inch guns. Also, Hitler observing how poorly the uh, commerce raiders had done in the Atlantic and in the seas between the United Kingdom and Russia determined that he wasn't going to spend the money to actually get these ships back in operation. He had other things that he was more interested in spending the money on, like U-boats, which is probably a much better commerce raider than these ships ever were. As a result, her 11-inch guns were used as coastal artillery batteries in Norway. During the invasion of the port that she was dry docked in the last time, which was Gotenhafen, as the Soviet Army, the Red Army, advanced, the skeleton crew sank Gneisenau out the entrance of the harbor as a block ship on March 27, 1945, where she remained until after the war, where she was eventually scrapped, sold for scrap. Scharnhorst herself sank in the Battle of North Cape, in which she encountered the Royal Navy battleship HMS Duke of York, and the three British cruisers HMS Belfast, HMS Shellfield, and HMS Norfolk. Sorry, that's Sheffield, not Shellfield, Sheffield in Norfolk. Belfast, Sheffield, and Norfolk were, were actually far ahead of Duke of York, and in the in this battle, uh, they were able to tie up Scharnhorst until the Duke of York could get there and engage. During the battle, Scharnhorst was hit by more than four torpedoes. There were four confirmed torpedo tube hits. The flooding caused her to slow down until Scharnhorst was torpedoed and shelled to death. Her rear turret, which was the only remaining operational turret, continued to fire until the ship capsized and sank with almost all hands. Only 36 crew members survived that battle. In-game. Well, ships play very well in-game, and they really take what Bayern represented, and this is true of both Scharnhorst, the Premium, and Gneisenau, the Tech Tree ship. They, they both play very similarly. Scharnhorst is a little bit more cruiser killer focused, thanks to the 11-inch guns. Gnais now is a little bit more battleship focused because of her 15-inch guns. But they play basically the same, and they take Bayern, and they add speed and a lot of armor to that mix. They also add very good handling to that mix. Gnais now in game goes 32 knots, Scharnhorst goes 31 and a half. So you have a lot of speed there, certainly a lot more than the 25 that we see in Bayern. And it's far quicker to get to those speeds, so you don't spend half the match actually getting that speed and then turn once and it's all gone. You actually have power to actually get there and use that speed. Also, the Gneisenau and Scharnhorst have a boatload of, of belt armor. It's impressive how much belt armor they actually have. They have 350 millimeters of belt armor. To put that into perspective, Iowa doesn't have that much belt armor. If I can get it to load... Nope, got to get rid of our torpedo bulges. 200, 307 millimeters for Iowa. So you actually have more belt armor by a healthy margin than Iowa does in the game. And of course you have your turtleback armor scheme. What this means is, is unlike the Tirpitz, which has a really thick front bulkhead, and unlike the Bismarck, which has a really thick frontal bulkhead, going straight at enemy ships doesn't work nearly as well as giving a slight angled profile. I always tell people that when you're playing the Gneis now on the Sharn Horse, the best angle to be at is to be at an angle where the only the front two turrets can fire, but the rear turret is merely a, a, a quick, brief pressing of a rudder shift key to bring it to bear, and then a quick shift back to mask it. And you kind of do that tail wag as you approach ships. Of course, the biggest threat of this ship, while it is, it is the main guns, don't get me wrong, the biggest threat of this ship is when it does close into distance, you have a... a two-pronged defensive ring, really, you have this impressive secondary battery that both Scharnhorst and Gneisenau in-game have. You also have these torpedo tubes mounted on the side that also add to the lethality of these ships. And and the both together make Gneisenau and Scharnhorst just some of the most fun ships to play in the game. So if you to put that a little bit more clearly, if you haven't figured it out yet, this ship is like the pinnacle of brawling for a lot of reasons. Much in the same way that Turpitz was when she came out, 
you basically can suicide rush ships with this and come out ahead. And it, it's very forgiving, and it's a lot of fun to play that way. The secondary battery makes approaching you extremely dangerous with a destroyer or a cruiser. And because you see Tier 5 games in this, some of those cruisers just absolutely disintegrate underneath your secondary battery fire. So she plays a lot like, a, like I said, a very fast and maneuverable Bayern. She's an excellent brawler, and as a result, her stats really favor that. I mean, obviously, that's the way people play it. So let's talk about those stats. She has 58,200 hit points, which is quite a lot for a Tier 7 battleship. I believe the Colorado is somewhere around 50,000. I think Nagato is right around 58. She does have a lot of armor. Like I said, her belt armor is 350 millimeters, which is just an impressive amount of, of belt armor. Way more than the Iowa. In terms of torpedo protection, though, she only has a 24% reduction. That is actually based in history. If you go and read the Wikipedia page, they do have a very extensive analysis of the torpedo bulge protection on the Scharnhorst class, Gneisenau class of battleships. Her main battery does consist of six 15-inch rifles in this game. Those will be the primary armament from now and through Bismarck, so really not... I mean, I guess you get them at Bairn, Bairn, Gneisenau, Bismarck, all 15-inch guns. These turrets are actually shared with the Bismarck. I think Bairns are different. Uh, don't quote me on that, though. They do have a maximum range of 19.5 kilometers. They are not particularly accurate with a 258-meter dispersion. At least they don't feel that accurate at that range. Again, this ship excels in the brawling scenario. She's got quick-turning turrets for how big the guns are. And as a result, she's just a riot to play up close and personal. Her secondary battery consists of 11 twin-inch turrets with 128 millimeter guns. You get five of them on each side and you get one in the tail that can also come into play. It does have a pretty good arc to it. Scharnhorst also has a very similar complement of, of secondary batteries to her. I've already done a video on the Scharnhorst because it was a pretty controversial ship when it came out as a premium. So go check that out. The secondary battery does have a 7.6 kilometer maximum possible secondary battery range. I say maximum possible. This does include the 5% flag for secondary battery range. So 7.6 is the longest you'll get. That's with AFT and BFT. And the secondary battery upgrade. <clears throat> like I said, she does have torpedoes. They are triple torpedo tubes, the dialing torpedo tubes. And there are three on each side and, and one turret on each side or yeah one turret we'll call it a turret they do have a six kilometer range and a 64 knot top speed they are extremely useful for getting ships to move in ways that you want them to move whether that's turn towards you to get them to close the distance or turn away from you to open up their broadside or they're extremely useful because they do do a healthy amount of damage with 13,700 damage that's certainly enough to take off huge chunks of enemy ship's health. In terms of AA defense, she has the best in-class AA suite, owing in large part to those secondaries that also operate as dual-purpose gun mounts. That would be these 128mm guns that you have 11 of in total. 22 total barrels firing. Her Medium range AA starts at 4.2 kilometers, and then her short range stuff is all at 2.4, which is significantly better than the Colorado at this tier. We have one more example of, and the last example of, a German battleship doing better at the role that U.S. battleships were intended to do, which is BAA barges. In terms of maneuverability, she does have a maximum speed of 32 knots. We already covered that. A turning circle of 830 meters, which is decent. Not great, but for Tier 7, not doing too bad. And a rudder shift time of 11.8 seconds. In terms of concealment, she does have a 15.2 kilometer detection range by sea and a 13 kilometer detection range by air. In terms of upgrade modules... This is all becoming very self-explanatory at this point. From here on out, you know, it's going to be main, main armaments mod 1 for sure. 
Secondary battery mod 2, for sure. That's our plus 20% to secondary maximum battery, maximum firing range, and 20, minus 20% to the maximum dispersion, or the circle of where shells will land. Minus 20% to that as well. Damage control systems mod 1, and steering gears mod 2. Let's talk about the battle. Let's go to that video. Alright. So this battle was a tier 7 battle. And as you can see, I am divisioned up with the Sharn Horse and an Atlanta. And these ships really actually benefit quite heavily from playing with other ships with similar play styles. And they don't have to be exact matches. You don't have to have a Sharn Horse to organize now or anything like that. Just keep in mind that with proper support, a German battleship or multiple German battleships are almost unstoppable with the current meta on the North American server. It has a very interesting playstyle when you do that because most of your teams are going to go, Hey, those guys are pushing. Maybe we should follow them. And you end up playing a little bit more like Wargaming intends for people to play these ships. Now in this battle, we're going to see a mix mash of all the other details. It's not going to get into the real nitty gritty brawling that we saw with some of the other videos in this line. However, it does show fairly well how the Ganaisa now plays when you play her to her strengths. And of course, like we talked about in the previous video, you know her strengths are predominantly in her speed, her mobility, and her belt armor. Now there are two carriers on each team in this match, which uh, this match does a pretty good job of showing how just dominating in this tier the anti-aircraft is on this ship. And if I remember correctly from looking at the warships.today stats earlier this morning, it was by a healthy margin. I want to say it was two and a half or three times that of the Colorado, which was the other ship in its tier that is well known for any aircraft capabilities. Now, it's always a wise thing if you guys didn't know that you if you press and hold the left control and mouse over your ship icon over on your health bar, you can actually look at all of your secondary ranges if you're unsure of where they're at. You can also do that with the uh, if you hover over the shell types of the torpedoes, it will tell you that as well. So we took shot out on that Miyoko. We're going to get one regular pen and two over pens for, well, a healthy amount of damage there. Looks like just shy of 10k in total. I'm sure that's not how that Miyoko was intending to start this day, but that's exactly how it started this day. So we're going to go ahead and just sit there and laugh. Fortunately, he turns away with that one. Now we do have a, a DD up ahead, so it's always a good thing to be on your toes. It is the only destroyer in this game, and if I remember correctly, it gets taken out relatively early. We also have a whole bunch of people sailing broadside to a battleship. It's a uh, behavior I don't necessarily condone. These shots are going to end up missing this Nuremberg by... Well, you know, a couple clicks over. Looks like it would have straddled him anyway, but that's okay. And what I'm trying to show with this part of the video is I'm trying to show you just what that dispersion is, is like at, at longer ranges. 14, 15 kilometers. The guns are usable, but don't expect them to be, you know, Nagato levels of accuracy. <laughs> Taking fire there from the New Mexico. Their carriers are spotted. At least one of them is spotted. It's good to know that he's up north. I'm sure the other one is as well. And we missed the Nuremberg. Let's try the Miyoko. So far in this game, we've managed to score four hits for 11,000 damage. We'll take shot out on the Miyoko. Probably should repair those double fires here pretty soon. Citadel. There we go. So we dang near took a Miyoko completely out of the fight. We'll go ahead and shoot at his buddy. The other big thing with these ships is that it holds true of the Iowa as well. 
as well as the North Carolina, the Montana, and any battleship that has a lot of speed. The key is not to overrun the rest of your team. You'll see that I slowed down there in order to let my teammates catch up. And really, the teammates that I'm trying to get to catch up to me are my division mates, the Atlanta and the Sharnhorst. And this ship plays really well with the Sharnhorst. It's, it's actually really quite impressive how well these two ships play from each other. Unfortunately, that Nuremberg, well, you can see there the dispersion doesn't help you any, so. All right, so we're gonna keep pushing these guys into this corner. You know, we're, we're starting to take some fire here, but for the most part, we remain undamaged. We do have a Miyoko ahead of us. There's a Hatsuhara, let's get our secondaries on him. Looks like they're opening up. And Mr. Miyoko is going to pay for his sins of sailing broadside. And there's a Citadel in the sink. We also have our AA guns going to town. You can see we got incoming torpedo bombers. Well, they turn away, so I'm not sure what happened there. We also have another Miyoko there that we're going to go ahead and kill secure. Since he's low on health, take guns out of the fight. That's really what these ships are, are really good and capable at. You'll notice now that I'm within seven kilometers of another New Mexico of another enemy battleship. I, I've taken a couple hits from various ships and we've not lost a whole lot of hit points. Looks like 3,100 hit points in total. There was a repair in there, so that's not entirely just deflecting them, but... Okay, so we finally have some incoming fire there. There's first shell hits from a New Mexico and only did 4,500 damage. We returned and did a lot more than that, 7,500. We're going to continue to push our way up to him, mostly because I'm trying to find this Hatsu Haru, and there he is. And of course, the, the mobility of these ships is, like I, like I said in the other video, it's really one of their stronger suits. You can use that mobility to really turn and, and avoid taking a lot of damage from torpedoes. Now, I know Hatsu only has two sets of torpedo tubes, so it's safe to continue our push on him, knowing that his torpedoes are, you know, most likely reloading. And poor Hatsu didn't survive the engagement. Unfortunately, New Mexico is now behind the island, and, well, we're going to launch some torpedoes here just in case he comes around the island. And then we're going to go hunt down their carriers. We, you can see we did take quite a bit of damage there with that torpedo hit, as well as some of the hits from the New Mexico, but nothing that was too damaging. You can see we've already shot down five aircraft. Now granted, there is a Ryojo and a Ranger in this fight, so not exactly perfect, but there's kill number four. Admittedly, that was pretty cheap. <laughs> the rounds were out to kill him, but that's all right. We'll call it kill securing. <laughs> this game I do end up with a Kraken. Oh, spoilers, I know. There I took a hit from a... I believe that was a Sharn horse that actually shot me. Now, Land Warriors, my division mate in the Sharn horse, we're going to go play Commerce Raiders. Look, he, Land Warrior's up there in a Sharn horse, and he's getting attacked by aircraft here. At least he will be here shortly. There they are. And we will go ahead and try and get ourselves into helping him with our anti-aircraft suite. Unfortunately, our Atlanta is still pretty far behind us. I don't exactly know the reasons why he's quicker than us in top speed, but that's okay. Mr. Mullet, we'll, we've got pretty good AA ourselves, so we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll take care of each other. And Land Warrior ends up taking one of these torpedoes. But we end up taking out the Torpedo Bomber Squadron, which is really what matters. And I'm up to eight aircraft kills already in this match, now nine. So like I said, these ships have very, very, very powerful AA, including the Sharn Horse. It's not the only ship that has powerful AA. Their whole team is thoroughly, thoroughly not paying attention to us, and we're really curb stomping them anyway, so... We got dive bombers coming in... We'll go ahead and focus them with our AA, and we're going to keep our guns pointed over here for obvious reasons. We've got carriers over here that we're trying to hunt down. We want them. Now, the key to avoiding 
massive damage with dive bomber attacks is to... You, you don't want to be in line with their direction of attack. So when they attack, they will frequently attack from your bow or stern. So if you can turn at the last minute, that helps mitigate some of that damage intake. Now we're going to focus our AA guns on the... Oh, got a citadel on the ranger. We're going to focus our AA guns on the torpedo bombers because they are the biggest threat to us right now. Mr. Mullet is finally in range with his dual purpose AA gun, so we've got the combined AA of a true anti-aircraft cruiser and two battleships with literally the best anti-aircraft in the game at their tier. And we are shooting down aircraft left and right, and we are putting holes in this Ranger like it's going out of style. Now, just a, a little bit of a tip, if you're paying attention to the minimap, you can tell the angle at which the Ranger is going away. He's not perfectly broadside to us, so you don't need to lead too high up. I'm actually leading too far up for this ship. We've got more torpedo bombers incoming, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn into them. Oh, they're repositioning. Go ahead and slam on the brakes and turn. I'm going to eat one of these torpedoes, that's okay. That's actually the weakest part of the torpedo belt. And we have the... we didn't end up taking the flood on that, so that's, that's a good thing. And we're going to kill off the ranger with another citadel. There's the Kraken unleashed, and look at what showed up! RJ, your deck is so flat. And of course RJ is sending his dive bombers at me. I don't know why that didn't end up as a citadel, but I probably overpinned it, I think, is what ended up happening. By now, our carriers are finally paying attention to that. Hey, our two battleships that have pushed all the way to their cap and are hunting down their carriers have uh, come under attack from aircraft, so we better put some fighters over them. That's all right. And, of course, there's the end of the match when we sink the RJ because they had lost all the points. I hope you learned from this video just kind of how the gunplay feels and just some of the ways in which you can really play with it. I got 22 secondary hits, not a whole lot of damage to them, but that's okay. 2,046 base XP, 27 aircraft shot down. 27 aircraft shot down in four citadels. There is the secondary damage is only 6,700 damage it looks like, and there's our credit screen. Anyway, I really enjoy playing the Ganais now. I actually enjoy playing the Sharn Horse more. Her guns feel a little bit more in line with what I'm used to expecting. It plays like a really heavy cruiser. The Ganais now does play like a battleship, but I just don't really care for its play style. I prefer the extra three gun barrels, even though they have lower penetration to battleships. That doesn't seem to impact the gameplay at all for me. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think, and if you guys like the Ganais now or the Sharn Horse, if you have both. Anyway, I'm your peacekeeper. Like, comment, subscribe, and thank you guys for watching.